Hi Illustrators, this is Rebecca. I'm going to show you how to get started on your travel poster as well as refine your use of the pen tool a little bit more. So uh, I brought in one of my first images that I'll be using to build my travel poster and over here I've locked the back the image and I've um, created a, a second layer to start using my pen tool in. So I'm going to grab my pen tool and the way I'm going to build this is uh, I'm going to treat the ear and the entire head of this elephant as one, one block of color. I'm not going to include the tusks, but I'm going to create the head kind of separately from the rest of the body. So the way that I like to work with the pen tool is to uh, start at a point somewhere on the uh, image that I'll be tracing and then work in a clockwork I mean, uh, go in a clockwise direction um, with my shape. So I'm going to start on the point here. Then I see the next part of the shape where uh, I'm basically going to have a change in, you know, smoothness. So this part right here is almost a straight line. So I can just click to this point here where it starts to rise up a little bit into this curve. Okay. Now I'm going to click. On the, where the curve ends, so that's right here, this bend in the elephant's ear. I'm going to click and drag and watch the back handle go where I need it to go along the edge of the elephant's ear. I forgot to switch my colors here, so I have my fill on, so I'm going to flip flop that so I have my stroke on instead. Okay, I can keep going. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and go for the next arc in the ear, which is about here, so I'm going to click and drag. And notice that this isn't perfect here, this handle that came out, but that's okay because it's pretty darn close. I'm going to keep going to about here, click and drag and watch that back handle raise up there. Now my forward handle is way low, so if I try to click up here, there's going to be quite a dip. And I don't want that, so I'm going to hit my Alt or Option key to make my cursor change to this little V here. And I'm going to click and drag with my mouse while I'm holding down the Option Alt button. Okay, now I have the handle going back in the direction I need to continue this curve here. So I'm going to come about here to this dip, pull up that back handle to create that nice curve that I just finished, hold down the option key and now move my front handle in the direction that I'm trying to go for the next curve. And so on and so on. So I'm going to keep looking at where the, the curve kind of ends and creates the next one. I'm going to pull to create my last curve and then adjust with my Alt Option key to get my handle to go in the direction of the next curve. So now this curve goes pretty far down so I can just pull it on down here. And I didn't have to adjust the forward handle, it was going in the direction I need. Now this one here and I'm going to bend down into this little dip into his head there. Okay. And this one is more of an angle, so I can go ahead and hold down my Option key, pull it, tuck it back a little bit, and then try it again. There we go. So I'm going to bring it along. And if it's not perfect while you're tracing, it's no problem because as you learned, you can go back and use your um, direct selection tool to adjust those points. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and click here, bring up this part, this point in the ear. And I'm always zooming in and out so that I'm not killing myself, first of all, like straining my eyeballs or leaning with really poor posture up against my monitor. Uh, I want to try to stay ergonomic so that I can do this for a long time in my life and um, just work smart, you know. So I'm using my Command Plus and Command Minus keys to zoom in and out while I just click and pull my handles where they need to be. I'm coming to a little bend here. There we go. So as you see, I just did a little quick um, click so I didn't have to use my Alt Option button to pull to tuck my handle back. But you know, sometimes it's inevitable. You have to use it. Okay, I'm going to zoom out and see where I'm going here with this trunk and tusk. And I'm going to keep going all the way around, past the tusk, and so on and so on. Okay, 
I'm going to go all the way around the trunk, back up this tusk, under the chin here, up under this ear, and finish my shape over here to get one giant shape. And I'll go ahead and show you how this looks in the end here. So I brought in the colors from this uh, travel poster assignment addendum. This is really important that you guys read this because it has the uh, required specs that you need, the size of your poster, the fonts that you can use, the color scheme that you can use, and you can only use these colors, and you can only use a maximum of seven of them, so you can't use all of them. So you've got to think about it and plan, plan accordingly. So what I recommend doing over here in your swatches panel is creating a little folder of these colors. So this folder is called, I, tr I titled it Travel Poster. To do this, uh, down here in the swatches panel, you click on this new color group folder icon, and then you can type in uh, the title of your folder, and I titled mine Travel Poster. Then if you go to color, um, I'm going to switch back here to Travel Poster Addendum file. I have the CMYK numbers here for you. So um, my cyan is 0 for this yellowish color. Magenta is 30, 90, 0. So that's 0, 30, 90. Go back into oop, Africa 2. Okay, there we go. Go back in there and go and type in 0, tab 30, tab 90, tab 0. And there's my other yellow color. I click back on my swatches panel and now I can click and drag and drop this into my travel poster family. So I've created almost a gradient here the way I've laid it out. You can just click and drag these around and once they're in there. Um, but I'm doing it like this so my eye can actually see the lightest to the darkest in this um, kind of brown family. And then over here in my elephant, let me turn off some of this visibility so you can see how I built it. Boop, boop, boop. Okay. So here's the main head uh, image, I'm sorry, shape that I started on the previous file that I was demonstrating. I can turn down my opacity while I'm building to kind of see, oops, I got to select it first by clicking on the circle here. I can turn down the opacity to see what's the next darkest, what's the actual, what's the um, absolute darkest area. I think working that way is the best and then kind of filling in the in-between shades. So the darkest area is this shadow along his ear and his eye here and then down here in the trunk and some of these little wrinkles here. Um, so I built that dark shape there. Then I built, oh, let's try this again. Um, I built this dark area above his eye in the actual eyeball. And then this dark wrinkle, this one here and under his eye a little bit. Then the next darkest shape was kind of this secondary shadow, and so I built it with this um, color here. So if I pull this back up, there you go. So remember in your travel poster, you know, they aren't incredibly detailed. They just kind of reference shadows and details, and that's how you got to look at these shapes as you're building them. Um, and like I said, you know, just be smart with your color combinations. And, uh, you know, and by no means do you have to apply the color where it has to go. Like in this travel poster here, the water is blue. But what if the water was this yellow color? Well, nobody, I guess nobody really wants to see yellow water, but you know what I'm saying. So, you know, feel free to just push your imagination and, you know, just go crazy with this assignment. Have some fun and just have a great time making art. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with.